You got it. You got it. Let's work. Hey guys, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com. And today what you're going to see in this workout is you're going to see us using box squats with chains. Now, chains have been around for nearly 30 years and they're a form of accommodative resistance. Accommodative resistance basically means that you're stronger at the top than you are at the bottom. So chains kind of accommodate to that strength curve, so to speak. So when you're using chains, you're using more weight at the top. Today we're using 200 pounds more at the top and about 60 pounds at the bottom. So as you rise, it's contrastingly getting heavier. The chains teach you how to drive through sticking points. So when you're learning to push against chains and accommodative resistance, you tend to completely nullify all of your sticking points on the way up. You'll notice that a lot of people, when they come up on squats, they'll get about an inch to two, maybe three inches out of the hole, and then they stall out and they can't move it anymore. That's really common with free weights because the hardest part of free weights is the bottom. So we did the box squats in order to make the bottom hard, and then we added the chains in order to make the middle and the top hard. So it's a way to build up your squat without just free squatting all the time, which we've learned is a huge negative once you get to a certain strength level, your body's not gonna be able to recover from the exact same position or the exact same type of movement constantly. So to squat for years on end and do it at a heavy load for a long, long time, you're gonna need different types of squatting with different types of pressure. Chains are also have a stability factor to them. So when you're squatting with chains and you're coming down and up, the chains don't necessarily act like free weights. They like to sway and rotate. That can also increase core stiffness. So you noticed in the winning warm-up, we did alternate toe touch crunches with a five pound dumbbell to help activate some of that core straightening. The other thing that we did was, is we did hanging hamstring curls, which is a great way to isolate the hamstrings. And if you think about it, when you're bent, you're in a squat position at the bottom. So it's teaching you to activate your hamstrings a little bit more while you squat. And the other part of the winning warm-up, you saw that we use kettlebell swings, which mimics a squat pattern. So it's not exactly like a squat, but it's close enough that the transfer is high. So today we used a 55 pound kettlebell, whereas the week before we used a 35 pound kettlebell. So a little bit more difficult. <laughs> has a different max and we had women training today as well and they used only two chain on each side versus five so they're using 80 pounds of accommodative resistance versus 200 some of that has to do with how much weight they're going to accumulate on the bar so for a general rule of thumb for chains you don't want it to add out to about more than about 20 percent of the total bar loading on the bar so if you look at like what we did today our last set was around 360 and we use 200 pounds of chain, which is about 560 at the top, equating to around 30%, which is an advanced level. But for beginners, using 20% of your maximum weight in chain or band is gonna be a little bit more optimal for you. We do it based on law of accommodation. So the last time we squatted with chains, I think we only used two or three. This time we used five, which is the upper limit of about a 600 to an 800 pound squat, roughly. With chains, you get that adjustable, like, swaying and rotating, which makes the core have to activate a little bit harder. Whereas the bands kind of make their own groove. So if you're already super balanced, bands may be more effective, but if you need more stability, say you have trouble when you're walking squats out or you're going down, you can't get good position, the chains might be a better alternative for you. Literally just go down to the box. You're still pushing out laterally, but you're in that squat position. Then to come up, you don't have to rock. You literally just push out. Right now, you're finishing there and then having to do that. You're, you're trying to make yourself use your quads, and they don't want that. Just push out. Two, two count, come on. One, two, eight. One, two, eight. You can see the, the second and third rep, you do better because you've engaged your glutes from the concentric of the first rep. Just push out harder the whole time, and all that stuff goes away. You won't feel it in your knees anymore. Come on, chest up off the box. One, chest two, up. Oh. Come on. Get it in there. One, hit! 
A little slower. A little more pause. Come on. One, hit. There we go. Come on. One, hit. All right, so we just heard Matt talk about a lot of detail uh, around chains and why they work and accommodating resistance. And, and I just wanted to go into uh, more of a beginner level, right? So what are chains and what do they do? When we squat, when you move any weight, even if it's bench or squat or deadlift or whatever, the moment you get that weight moving, it weighs less, right? It, it has momentum at that point and it weighs less. And if you only ever use straight weight, which can be damaging from CNS standpoint, it's a lot of loading, but it also, once you get the bar moving a little bit, it's lighter. And then at that place, you're probably gonna have a sticking point where the weight's the lightest. It'll slow back down and then you have to grind again. But if you have a chain, as you pick it up off the floor, it gets heavier. So you're counteracting that momentum. So from the most simplest form, you're just taking away your body's ability to make it easier, right? You're moving it off the floor. The weight wants to get lighter because of momentum. You're adding chain. Each link takes away that momentum and makes you a better lifter. The thing we noticed today in squats, the biggest weakness is most people's chests were falling off the box. So when you dead stop on the box, right? Like you have to be able to recruit the muscle fibers because you don't have any stretch reflex. You've taken that out of the equation. So people's chests were dipping. So we know they're having a hard time recruiting glute. Okay. So we need to strengthen that and the accessory work. We're going to go <laughs> balls to the wall on the glutes through the hip bridge, right? To really focus and build that muscle. So even in this, you're going to notice he's still pushing his knees out. That's our same cue we use to, to really light that glute up. You'll see people cheat this movement and their knees will come in and they're actually using quad. So we use the core lift for an assessment tool. We found out there's a glute weakness. So now we're attacking that glute to try to make it better, right? All of our accessory work is, is focused on weaknesses. So the reason we would do a shrug is if we notice people are having like an upper back weakness and they're caving, we're actually going to develop that shrug, not only to develop your trap, but we actually pull back too to develop your scapular supporting muscles. So it's, it's actually helping with the squat. We've identified it as a weakness. Hope you guys watch the workout and get a little bit out of it be able to use, utilize it a little bit in your training. And if not, go on to Patreon and follow the workouts verbatim. And then over the course of six months to a year, you're gonna be way stronger just because you're doing things smarter. So talk to you guys soon.